How's it going everybody? Uh, today we're going to be working on 2003 Mazda Tribute ES V6 and we're going to be working on uh, cleaning the mass airflow sensor, throttle body, and the idle air control. I think that's what you call it, IAC. Uh, because I've been having idle issues where, especially when, you, when you're stopped, it'll just kind of, it'll just like stumble and like bleh. That's one of the probable causes and the easier things to do. So I'm going to show you me doing that. So I'm going to take these off. These are two eight millimeter bolts and you take this off and to get the mass airflow sensor off, you just unhook this, uh, use some security bits to get that off and it comes right up and the throttle body, you can actually do it with it still on the car. You just have to take off the, uh, the clamp, uh, well, both hose clamps and the hose. So, uh, I might take it all the way off, I'm not sure yet, but there are a lot of things that come off of it. So first is these two 8 millimeters, and this is a long one, just because that's the one I found. The, I bought this to do valve covers with. If you haven't seen that video, check it out. So basically what happens is this thing gets carbon buildup on it, and that's what I saw when I took it off earlier today. So it's got a bunch of, I mean, not, not a, it's not awful, but... It could help fix my problem, or at least mitigate it some more, because the PCV valve actually mitigated it, the majority of the problem. I replaced that. It's um, you can't really see it, but it's up in here, way down in there. I have a video on that as well if you want to check that out. That does help. That did help the majority of the bat, the rough idle problems I was having. Oh yeah, don't forget this electrical clip. Probably better to do it before, I just forgot. There we go. And don't lose these bolts. You will need them. Alright, so basically, hopefully you can see that it's pretty it's it's like got a black coating to it, if that makes sense. Let me shine a light. Basically what that is is carbon buildup. It's not awful, but it needs doing. It needs cleaning. Oh yeah, I should have mentioned the first thing you're actually supposed to do is take the battery terminal off. I forgot. It's a 12 millimeter. You just loosen it a little. And you should be able to. I like to pry up with the, uh, with the wrench while wiggling it loose like that. And then just put it somewhere where it's not going to come back in contact. So, next, uh, mass airflow sensor. Actually, I'll tell you what, we'll do the, the intake boot first. Just unscrew it. You could use a socket, but <laughs> I've already got this screwdriver out. And it really doesn't take much. I'm just doing it more than necessary, really. Just because I don't like having to do things twice. All right, you'll definitely want to take this thing off. It should pop off like that. And then the boot should come wiggle loose at some point. I'm going to take a little wiggling. I've done this at least three times already, uh, just from working on this car. I mean, well, this being the third time. Third time's the charm. I'm usually hesitant to use a screwdriver, but... I'm not actually pressing against the mating surface, so I'm using this this piece for leverage, so, and I think it's okay. And I'm not pushing super hard. Yeah, I don't know. I've been able to do it without it before. Wiggling it like that, back and forth. It's like stuck to the plastic here. There we go. It was just kind of stuck on there. There we go. What worked is I kind of flip this up here and then it had room to come out. There we go. Take boot. 
Now if you can kind of see that, it's a little bit dirty. It's not awful. It's not like the worst thing ever, but it needs to be clean. So I think I'm going to leave it on. So let me get the mass airflow sensor off and we'll get to it. All right, so to get this thing off, I had to buy a set of security bits from Harbor Freight. Uh, this thing I already had, and I don't know what size it is yet. Looks like one of these, it's a star bit with a hole in the middle. Well, the screw itself has, I mean, it's the reverse of that. So, hey, I guess I guessed right. I don't know what size this is, but it's the one that fits. So it goes in one of these, and you should be able to just unscrew it. Now these things, at least in this particular screwdriver thing, have a tendency to come out, the bits, I mean. So I'm going to be real careful not to drop this in there. For one, not to lose it in the engine. And two, if I lose this, I don't have a way to put this back on unless I go buy another <laughs> set. There's one. I should take the electrical off first. It's a little tab you press right, right here. Okay, there we go. And it should come up just like that. Yeah, it doesn't look, it doesn't, doesn't, sorry, you can't see that. It doesn't look too bad. It's uh, fairly clean, actually, so that's that's good. Okay, so onto the cleaning. Really, you should wear gloves and goggles for this. For this one, I don't think I will, because I'm just going to put it on the ground and spray it. I'm not really going to be touching it. You want to make sure you use mass airflow sensor cleaner not throttle body and air intake cleaner for the mass airflow sensor. This is a brand new can. I'm just going to shake it and spray it. I'm going to set this down. Okay, I'm gonna flip it and, well, you know, that looks fine. That do, that already does look better, so hopefully you can see that, but it's a little better already. Okay, there we go. It's good, I'm gonna let that dry for a little bit. Ah, up here. Next, we got this thing. We wanna use throttle body and air intake clean. So I'm just going to spray it in here, kind of leave it, see what I can get. Try to get some of it out first, so spray it out in one side, out the other. Yeah, I probably want gloves for this. Kind of just letting it sit in the bottom. Uh, I wish I could do the same for the top because that's where the actual valve is. But that's getting pretty dirty already, so I'm just going to swish it. Swish and flick without the flick. So you really can't see what I'm doing, but I'm pushing the little valve and it does move back and forth. I don't know, it's a little bit cleaner than it was. It's not, it's still not perfect. That is, that's about as good as it's gonna get with that stuff. Let's see, while we're at it, the last thing I'm gonna do is spray the throttle body itself, just to kind of get some of that junk out, or at least dissolved. I'm gonna try to not get it anywhere else if I can. Just use the uh, spray thing. I'm going to open this a little bit. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. You may not be able to, but you should at least get the idea that looks better already. There, got the top a little bit. I'm going to do it again. Okay. Looks good to me. Yeah, it's a little bit better, but I don't think that was the main problem. Uh, I still don't know if the main problem for me was that 
or if, or was the this idle air thing or if it needs more like uh, next thing I would look at would be the EGR valve for the exhaust gas recirculation I think is what it's called if that's dirty or or clogged or something it could cause issues related to idling so yeah let's go ahead and get these back on before I start rambling we'll start with the intake boot just kind of put it back on the same way you took it off reverse of that I mean obviously I mean really you could do this in any order but uh, the, the piece all the parts I mean just did the intake boot first while there's less stuff in the way honestly the, in the hardest part is the stupid intake boot <laughs> Tighten them down. Now this o ring is a little bit dirty, so I'm just going to wipe it so I don't mess up the seal. It should honestly be replaced, but I didn't know it had one. So just put it in. Probably should put Loctite on these, but they're, I think they're okay. Because there was originally. It's fine. And don't forget to plug it back in. And this one. And before I forget, plug it in. Put this little thing back on, so like that. Before you tighten this all the way down, make sure it's lined up, because I'll show you in a second. You see how it comes up like that? I don't know, it might be possible to come up, or to get it bound in such a way that it's not going to line up right. Like, say it gets stuck like this, but... battery or your car will not start. Good. That is everything. I don't know. Uh, my luck is that it's probably not going to do anything crazy right now. And when I go to drive it to work on Monday, it's probably going to. <laughs> but yeah, usually it did weird things uh, when it was colder, like as in the engine wasn't warmed up, and when it's in drive. So let's just go ahead and start it. There we go. Reset its little brain. Okay. 
honestly it seems better um, it's got a pretty high idle and that that seems normal for it being cold which I don't remember if it did that before it seemed like before it would idle I don't know in the normal range like five five to six hundred rpms thousand <laughs> and then it would jump so let's turn the air the heater on just real quick oh yes I sound more excited than I should be but it's barely dipping whenever the AC kicks in what it would do before look at that it's like barely moving it would be I hope you can see it but it would be about here like the 600 and then we go down to about five so we'll have to test drive it around a little bit that will be the key indicator that doesn't have to be when the, when it's cold uh, for it to do that so if if it does its thing where it goes uh, at any time then it didn't work so but it, it looks good so far it's got a good high idle which I don't think it did I think it tried to idle low whenever it was still cold so yeah uh, we'll drive it around in a little bit and check it out but yeah there, there's still lots of things I need to do to this car and there's th lots of things I've already done to this car if you want to check those out uh, check those out um, but yeah before uh, before we go do a test drive because I'm blocked in right now uh, just I just want to thank you guys for watching this video hopefully it was a little bit helpful and informative at least and yeah uh, leave a like if you enjoyed it uh, subscribe for more projects and repair videos and as always if you want to support the channel there are affiliate links in the description below uh, this time there weren't any parts except for cleaners which if I can find them I'll put the links to those but anyway yeah I'll go for a, a test drive and uh, I'll let you guys know how it turns out. I uh, will probably, if I can replicate the things in the driveway, then I will because you're not going to be able to see with the GoPro just sitting on my chest in the car because I have to drive. Right now I'm like propping it up with my finger, but yeah, it seems good so far. Uh, let me just turn the AC on again. Okay, um, you can see it holding steady. Okay, not 100% steady, but It's not doing it like it was. Like every two seconds, every time the the relay would click for something for the fan or whatever, it would it would just drop. And it's only doing that every now and then. So I'd I'd call that somewhat of a success. Um, so yeah, uh, we did something. I still might want to check out the EGR valve at some point. A few other things like the motor mount that I need to do. But honestly, this. I can't most most of the time that it's that it's on I can't really tell the difference uh, I mean from the needle not like it's obviously different than it was so yeah this is a little better I'm happy but yeah I'll see you guys in the next video